This is the only nanoscale lab in the magnetic recording uh, industry. A lot of our focus is on emerging memory technologies. Western Digital is very active in hard disk drive technology and NAND flash, but you're always looking to diversify your portfolio of memory and storage products. So the nanoscale lab was built to do research but our lab specifically right now, we are working in non-volatile memory. Not only is a nanometer small, it's, it's so small that it's difficult to really comprehend. To put this into perspective, um, a nanometer is about 100,000 smaller than an average size of a first run. So we have tools, as you'll see when you go into the lab, to deposit materials very precisely. We have tools to pattern resist on them very precisely. And then we have tools to etch away those materials very precisely. And you need this full tool set to actually build these nanoscale devices. When you're walking in the lab, you will see all those different stages, all those different steps. For example, you will see an area where the materials get deposited. You will see the tools where you get the thin films. When you get all these layers that will make up the final device. And the most important is this, the metrology section where we have all these sophisticated tools to see and to inspect these tiny, tiny, tiny devices at nanometer scale. We typically use uh, high energy electrons, either in a scanning electron microscope or in a transmission electron microscope. A transmission electron microscope can actually see individual atoms. We have to work in very high vacuum uh, at these scales because otherwise air particles will deflect the electron beam. Or if we're trying to deposit a chemical or use chemicals to etch, uh, we have to make sure the only chemicals in the tool are the chemicals we want there. We use yellow light because these, these resist chemicals I was describing that we use to pattern the wafers, they're sensitive to ultraviolet light, so we have to avoid blue light. Because of the nature of what we do, you can't have big picture windows to look into the lab. So it's not like we have a big sign that says uh, research nanofabrication lab. We have in my clean room people with PhDs in physics or material science or chemical engineering. And then sometimes, you know, some are relatively new grads, some have decades of experience. So we need both the tools and the people. What makes this lab very unique is the people. It's more about like, the diversity of the people that we have in this lab, as well as the expertise of the people that are here. Lei Wan is a, a senior technologist. He's been with us about 10 years. And so he builds our most complex devices for emerging memories. And what's really special is not only does he see the whole picture and know how to design them, he's really great hands-on with the tools. Aruza Alan, she did her PhD at Stanford in material science, and her role is to develop the, the emerging memory materials uh, that we're going to be using, and she uses this ANELVA tool to control the deposition of these materials. The electron beam lithography tool, you load your wafer in it, and the role of this tool is to pattern the resist, and then we'll use this pattern of nanoscale paint on the surface to figure out how we're going to etch or pattern the rest of the wafer. It's a lot like the old TVs back when there was a CRT, a cathode ray tube, steering that beam of electrons on the back of the screen. And it either hit the pixel and the phosphor lit up, or it didn't hit that pixel and the phosphor didn't light up. As we as a collective society keeps producing more and more data, like we need to work on storage technology. I think it's so, so exciting to work in a lab like this, even though this technology is gonna be like long-term, like five, 10 years. People do come and use our lab. So we do collaborate with universities. And I think most importantly for WD, we collaborate with other companies. If we think it's exciting, maybe we make a joint development agreement with this university or this startup, and then they use our clean room 
where we can now prototype them. Instead of building one or two devices, we can build hundreds of thousands or millions of devices on a wafer and really see the promise of this technology. To be able to participate in this from the beginning, from the idea, from the prototyping, um, also like to bring it in into a fabrication, mass production. I think it's so exciting.